You are now listening to Sorel Gore, 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 MD. So there are two other main divisions in the different types of stents. There are bare metal stents and there are covered stents. Bare metal stents are made out of stainless steel or nitinol, and they are meant to be metal scaffolds that prop open blood vessels or other luminal structures. Covered stents start with the skeleton of a bare metal stent, and that skeleton is then covered with a material called EPTFE. EPTFE stands for Expanded Polytetrafluoroethylene. This is very similar to Gore-Tex that you're going to find in backpacks and waterproof jacket liners. And the PTFE is applied to the stent on the inside and outside, sometimes referred to as an EPTFE sandwich. A covered stent more closely resembles a blood vessel in its configuration, and it's often referred to as an endoprosthesis. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of each type of stent? Let's start with bare metal stents. So one of the advantages of a bare metal stent relative to a covered stent is that it can allow for blood flow through the cells of the stent. When you use a covered stent, sometimes you're going to be covering over or paving over collateral vessels, and if those collateral vessels are important sources of blood flow, you could be jailing off those vessels, which could be a bad thing. So that is one of the advantages of a bare metal stent. There are some indications for stenting where bare metal stents are really the de facto go-to stent of choice. In the field of venous stenting on the pelvis and lower extremities, the stents of choice are large diameter bare metal stents. One of the stents most commonly used is called a wall stent. This is a stent that's been in use since the 80s. Oftentimes, multiple wall stents will be used in an overlapping fashion to recreate a venous channel for blood flow. So let's switch gears to covered stents. One of the major advantages of a covered stent is its ability to exclude abnormal vasculature from the circulation. This can be very useful in treating pseudoaneurysms, aneurysms, and traumatic vessel tears. I have personally used a covered stent to treat a life-threatening pseudoaneurysm in the common iliac artery. We had a patient being managed with long-standing ureteral stents. The right-sided stent had eroded into the right common iliac artery and was causing life-threatening bleeding. So we placed an atrium eye-cast covered stent in the right common iliac artery and successfully treated this life-threatening complication. In some vascular territories, the choice of covered versus uncovered stent is not always clear. In the SFA territory, historically, bare metal stents were used to treat narrowing from atherosclerotic disease. But in theory and in practice, those atherosclerotic plaques were able to prolapse through the stent struts and result in re-stenosis and therefore re-occlusion. So one of the responses to this problem was to start using covered stents in the SFA. The idea was to reline the blood vessel with a prosthetic material, which would be a physical barrier to the ingrowth of tissue. Now, of course, just as we find ways to constantly improve and fix the human body, the body is going to find ways to constantly outsmart us. So what ended up happening is when the covered stents were using the SFA, at the interface between the covered stent and the native blood vessel, the body started to grow fibrotic tissue as a response to the trauma of the stent. This would result in eventually stenosis and then an acute occlusion of the stent. So currently the tide has shifted in favor of bare metal stents in the SFA. Two of the stents out right now that have some of the best data in SFA are the Supera stent by Abbott Vascular and the Zilver PTX stent by Cook. The Supera stent has a combination of very high hoop strength and flexibility, which was previously very difficult to accomplish. The Zilver PTX builds on a previous generation bare metal stent with the addition of paclitaxel coating. This is a chemotherapy which is meant to decrease the problem of neointimal hyperplasia. So there you go, that's a preliminary hearing on the differences between bare metal stents and covered stents. In the next session, I'll actually show you and we're going to play with some real stents. You're watching Sorel RMD.